That's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today I wanted to give you guys some more leveling tips. I leveled a Wander through uh, normal today, and it took about three hours, but I did all the passive skill side quests, and I did the Trial of Ascendancy for Catacombs, plus I, so I had to sort through all the gear, and my computer is pretty bad. So, I was happy with three hours. Some people can do faster than that, but still, I was pleased. And by the time I got there, I realized I was wearing a lot of low-level unique items. So I figured I would give you guys information on some of the best uniques, some of the best low-level uniques for leveling through normal, and some of them even into cruel. Starting off with boots, we got Wanderlust. These things are beasts. You can equip them at level 1, 20% movement speed, you need movement speed for leveling, and you can't roll 20% until a little later on, so these will last you pretty much all the way through normal. They give you nice little bonus stat and little bonus mana regen, which is nice. And also overlooked, I think, is the immune to freeze, because, I mean, not a lot of things are going to freeze you if you have good cold resist. However, strong boxes can sometimes, you know, freeze you when activated, and that will get you killed. You're totally going to be... Mobs are going to surround you, they're going to kill you easily. This way, you click the strong box, get a bunch of packs, get a good pack density, kill them, efficient XP, run, kill them, open the box, don't even think about it, go fast, 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 you don't have to ID it, you don't have to read it, anything, because you're not going to get frozen. It's GG boost. Next, we got helmets, and there's a couple options for helmets. The best one is got to be gold rim. Gold rim can be a little bit expensive, can be like 3 to 4 chaos on hardcore, I'm sure on standard it's cheap, it gotta be cheap because you know you only need one per account, you're not gonna die, it's not gonna go anywhere. But 30% all res pretty much covers your defenses, half of your defenses, because you know physical damage doesn't start getting intense until act 4, for the most part, so you're not gonna have to really, really worry about evasion or armor for a while. So then most of the damage you have to worry about is elemental damage, and 30% is almost half of the resist you need because you need 20, 75 to be capped. So, Gold Rim, extremely good, highly recommend it, and you can wear it from the get-go. Easy, awesome helmet. Also, you might, uh, if you want a cheaper option, Honor More could be good for attack-based builds. It, you know, you can only equip it a little bit later, it gives a little bit of lightning damage, which is nice, I guess. And if you get a good rolled one, you can get up to 20% all res, I'm sure. I, th I mean, I think, which is good. It's nice, not as good a gold rim, but it's it's a good option if you're playing really budget on hardcore, something like that. Also, you could get an Asenaths if you're, you know, wanting to do the crazy clear speed style. You got the attack speed, the cast speed, the movement speed if you're feeling silly. And later on, if also you're still feeling that fast, fast leveling movement playstyle, you can get yourself a, a, a Peregrine para or something like that. It's got 10% movement speed, so I highly recommend one of those four helmets. Gold Rim is definitely my favorite. Moving on to body armor, the obvious choice, and mm, not the only choice, but Tabula Rasa, the most popular one. This one is not budget by any means, but if you have one by luck or by currency's sake, you don't have to worry about links whatsoever when leveling. You still want to have other four links and other sockets on other pieces of gear, but still having a six link is very nice. I don't actually think it's that great right out right out of the, the start of the game because you don't really have a lot of support gems. So even though you can equip it at level one, it's not that great for level one. So it's not needed in the beginning, but it is useful for leveling in general. Moving on to gloves. There's the... Uh, those lock tonial lock something caress got the cast speed the 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 cast speed and the attack speed the cast speed is great for casters because you can't get cast speed on gloves normally it has reduced mana but that is so insignificant at a low level the attack speed is good but you can get gloves with attack speed of that quantity or close and life and maybe an elemental damage on gloves if you're an attack based build pretty soon in the game so those gloves are better for casters but you can wear them at level one so they're great for attack based builds in the beginning also uh, slither pinch is great i mean is good it's okay if you get it later on there's some mana leech there's some there's some life leech and maligaro's gloves can be good if you're leveling as a crit character especially attack based character because they have attack speed on them you know they got the crit chance and the multi belts. Meganord's girdle. 
the percent life is awesome while you're leveling because you're going to continue to get the base life and there's a little bit of cold resist and 5 to 15 fizz damage is amazing when you're level 8 and it's pretty awesome through most of normal difficulty so I highly recommend Mega Nord's Girdle if you're playing an attack based build and you don't really have to worry about life on your belt if you don't need a lot of life on your belt you can get a this is kind of a weird option but you can get Parandus the Parandus belt gives you a lot of all stats if you don't want to worry about stats because while you're leveling typically you have to worry about you know um, offense Defense, uh, you need stat requirements, you know, and stat requirements. Defense is like all resist armor and evasion and stuff like that, and, you know, you can cover the, the all resist with rings and stuff like that. All stats will usually come from your amulet, and then the offense is usually going to come from your weapon, or maybe the elemental damage if you're an attack based build on rings as well, or gloves as well. So, the Perennis Belt can be pretty good, and also the, the Worms Belt gives you Mana Leech and Life Leech if you're playing an attack based build, and it gives you some Int, which is kind of hard to get if you're playing an attack based build at, at the start of the game, maybe depending on where you are on the tree, so that can also be good. So for belts, I recommend that. For jewelry, for, you know, amulet, and for rings, typically, uniques aren't that great, because, you know, amulets are pretty much a reserved spot. You're going to want to get stats so you can level up your gems properly. You know, if you're playing a strength-based character, but you need to level up a green gem, you're going to need to get dex on your amulet. But there are some cases, and I mean, if you're starting out in the game and you're really scared, you're playing hardcore or something, the uh, Araku Tiki amulet is pretty good. It has some life and it has some fires, which is pretty nice. But the Karui Ward gives 10% movement speed, which, and it gives strength and uh, strength and dex. So if you're playing a caster, put on that amulet. You don't have to worry about those two stats. Would be hard to get otherwise because you'll probably be getting a lot more int if you're playing a witch, I should say, because she's in the int area of the tree. And then you get your stats, and you get 10% movement speed, which could be pretty dang good for leveling. Also, if you're playing. Um, if you're playing a uh, attack base build and the black heart black heart ring that has the chaos damage and a little bit of life so it acts as a coral ring and has some fizz damage i mean that that's okay it's not really necessary but it's good cuz you can equip it right away and it's basically a coral ring with extra damage so i recommend that for attack base builds also i found this off uh, kadiro i hadn't thought of it before i don't think it's that expensive i'll uh, you know post a poe trade up on the video but lay he up of all gives all resist which is i mean resist or something you want to get on your rings it gives damage which is something that's just nice to have and it can give a lot it can give like 20% all resist i think and it gives you all stats, which is another thing you have to worry about while you're leveling. So that is definitely a really nice ring for, for leveling's sake. Uh, moving on, now let's talk about uh, specific builds, specific builds that you're playing. So if you're playing a bow build leveling up, if you're playing a caster build, a spell caster, or like an attack based kind of, you know, slicey, smashy build. So for my wander, I was actually leveling with a bow because I was scaling projectile damage and bows shoot projectiles and wanders can shoot projectiles too. So I mean, it doesn't matter what I'm playing with or leveling with. So I'm actually leveling with a bow. Four bows. I recommend storm cloud. Yeah, you can't use it to level eight, but that doesn't matter. Level eight is like 20 minutes if you're fast enough. So storm cloud is pretty much viable until the next unique that you want to use, but Stormcloud has a lot of attack speed, some elemental damage, and if you scale it with more LE damage support gem that you get in Act 2, you'll be destroying things, because the more multiplier is amazing. Then, I use a, uh, a Doom Fletch, which gives you more of that elemental damage, has some good mana regen, has a pretty good base crit chance if you're scaling crit that early, don't know how you are, and it has good attack speed, good fizz damage, anyway. It's just better than Storm Cloud. It won't list it properly on the tooltip DPS, but it's great for leveling. Also, if you're starting to, you know, not really be able to work with the whole more elemental damage thing because you start scaling fizz damage on the tree, get a Death's Harp. That additional arrow will help with your AoE clear as a uh, as a bow user, and also it has very good fizz damage. 
for quivers, there's not really any unique quiver worth using. No unique quiver that's, you know, mind-blowingly good or anything like that. Hiri's Bite is good for stats, but besides that, you just want to get one with life and some damage range, you know. Get the fire damage one at first and then the fizz damage one later. For casters, this is a big one. A lot of people love those casters. And the, the you know, the top tier, the, the all-star is Life Sprig. Life Sprig has the plus one gems. Plus one gems is pretty much the most important DPS increase to spell casters when they're leveling in the beginning of the game. It has plus one gems, it has cast speed, it has spell damage, it has life. What more could you want from that thing? It's amazing for leveling. Also, this is at level six or something like that. Uh, Aberaths. Aberaths gives a lot of fire damage. A lot, a lot of fire damage. It gives you spell, fire damage to your spells and just gives you the increase. So if you're leveling with a fire trap, you know, in a freezing pulse or a fire trap, and a lot of people do that, if you're leveling with a fire trap like a lot of people do, dual wielding Aberaths will destroy. And, you know, if you end up getting Firestorm later or some other fire spells, that can be very good. Later on with the casters, if you get a, um, a reverberation rod, get the uh, plus one gem in there, and then you get the spell echo, which is very strong, a very strong support gem, you know, just pretty much good with every single spell. Get that double cast speed, basically, and then you get the four link on your wand instead of a three link. Oh, and if you're using a shield while leveling, the only one I really recommend would be that Crest of Parandus, which gives you a little bit of leech, and it gives you a lot of life now. So bows, casters, covered. If you're playing an attack-based character or something like that, you probably don't want to... I mean, there's so many attack-based weapons, and you can roll good weapons as it is. I don't know if you want to go out and buy it because it's so specific for how you level that you may not get use out of it again. I, I mean, j just just for talking about it, you know, there's Gordrill for daggers, and there's like Red Beak... And then there's Screaming Eagle. There's just too many. There's there's a unique leveling item for every single weapon. You know, you can you could probably find a bunch of them yourself just easy. And they're going to be so cheap. So you may want to use... I don't know if it's worth your time anyway. I mean, it probably is if you're a newer player and you have the currency and you're scared about leveling and you want to stack more defenses. But one unique I do think is um, worth mentioning is the... Uh, Aurum Vorax, or, yeah, and it's the rapier that gives, gives you reduced rarity or something like that, but it gives you up to 60% all res. So, if you're dual wielding and you're using a skill that uses your main hand, and then you have this sword in the offhand, and then you use, if you're leveling with a skill that doesn't work with a sword, this is an amazing option if you can keep this weapon good, because 60% all res, and you'll be hitting with the main hand, so this thing's DPS will never matter. And if you're wearing a gold rim on top, you know, 30%, 60%, you'll be like 97%, uh, you, you can pretty much wear, just reserve your helmet slot and your weapons in your offhand slot for all of normal and cruel, and your resists will pretty much be capped, which is extremely, extremely overpowered. So yeah, that's just a little trick I would recommend for leveling as an attack-based build. If you really do want to know in specific all the attack-based weapons, I highly recommend checking the wiki. Also, a little bonus unique item is uh, jewels for casters. Clear Mind, but you do have to rush the jewel socket on the tree, but Clear Mind can give 60%, you know, spell damage, which is OP that early on in the game if you really rush the jewel socket. But you can't reserve your mana, but there's not really... Auras aren't that overpowered in the start of the game anyway. Also, a little bonus here for the end... Uh, if you're playing in Parandus right now and you're not watching this video later on, 7 League Step, 50% movement speed boots if you want to do that. However, I think they're really expensive on hardcore, at least I'm not sure about standard. I'll post the two prices. And this one, another Parandus specific, uh, Zerfi's Last Breath, I think it is, or Zerfi's Flask, whatever. That thing is overpowered for leveling. I was just face-taking bosses with way under-geared defenses, way under-leveled. You just use a high mana, ca uh, high mana cost skill, and you just, you know, you spam it, and you just face-take them, and you hit the flask, and your life just jump, 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 jumps back up. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So if you're playing Apprentice, I recommend those. Uh, that's basically my list of unique items that I, that off the top of my head, which I can think of, that are 
pretty good, definitely worth using, not too expensive. There's some other ones that might be worth it for jewelry, but they're kind of expensive or they're weirdly specific for your build. So look that up ahead of time before leveling so you can get it ahead of time. Uh, let me know if this was helpful. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys want some more leveling tips. Um, thank you so much for watching.